Hello and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is yet another video covering the Riverdy display, and today we will send the data from UART to the UI. We will simply receive something from the UART, and then display it on the GUI. I will continue where I left the previous project, so the AED functionality will still be present in the tutorial. Here is the previous project we worked on. Let's add another text area to it. I am using the same large typography, and the name should be text area UART. The wildcard range is already set for it. So this is it for the configuration, let's generate the project and open it in the cube IDE. In the meantime, let's see the datasheet again. Here you can see the board has RS485 interface, and RS232 interface. Along with these, the expansion connector also has the USART 1 pins, and one UART 8TX pin for the Modbus. For convenience, you can use the RS232, but since I don't have a converter for this, I am going to use the RS485. All of them work on the UART, so using either is fine. You can check out my previous video explaining the RS485 communication. Here we need only two pins, pin A and pin B. I am using a USB to RS485 converter module with the computer. The pin A from the module connects to the pin A of the board, and the pin B connects with each other. The board already has RS485 to UART converter, so we don't need to worry about the signal level. Let's see the project now. This is the same project we made for LED control, and I will continue with the same. Here in the main file, you can see the USART header file is already included. In the initialization section, the UART1 is being initialized, along with UART4, and UART8. Let's see the code for it. This section initializes the UART4, and if you note here, there is a function to initialize the RS485. This means that the UART4 is connected to RS485, and we will work with it. If you know about the RS485 module, there is a driver enable pin. This pin can be used to set the module in the receive mode, or the transmit mode. Here the de pin's polarity is set to high, which means that the pin is active high. So to pull the signal high, we pull the pin high, and to pull the signal low, we pull the pin low. The UART8 has no initialization here. The UART1 is initialized normally. In the initialization of UART2, the hardware flow control is enabled. So this must be connected to the RS232 port. As I mentioned, I am going to use the RS485 port, so I will use the UART4. Irrespective of whatever UART you use, the code will remain the same. All you need to do is, change the UART instance. Let's quickly see the MSP initialization for the UART4. Here you can see the DE pin is actually the pin P of 15. Keep this in mind, as we would need it to put the port in the receive mode. The UART4 initialization is already called, so we are good here. We don't need anything in the main file, let's head over to my file.c, which we created in the last video. Here we already have the LED related code from the previous video, so I will write the UART code separately. Most of the things will remain the same, so let's copy this complete code and paste in the UART section. Now we will change the word LED to the UART. Alright, let's understand things. First we define the task handle, and the task entry function. Then we have the attributes for the UART task. The stack size is 512 words, and priority is set to normal. Next define the attributes for the UART queue, 
which will be used to send the data to the UI. Then we write the functions to initialize the UART task and UART queue. And finally we have the task function, which we will write from scratch. Since we will be sending the data in the string format, we need to create a structured queue. I have covered this in my touch GFX video, you can see on the top right corner. Here the structure consists of two elements, a character array to store the data, and an integral variable to store the length of the data. Let's define the structure UART data S, which will be used to store the information. The queue will only have one element, and the size of this element will be the size of the structure. We also need to define the UART handle. So copy it from the UART.c file, and define it as an external variable. Now I could simply use the basic UART functions to receive the data here, but let's say that I want to use the idle line interrupt to do so. Let's also assume that I don't know how to initialize the interrupt for the UART. So far we have used the cubemx to initialize the interrupts for us, but we know that we can't use cubemx with the Riverdy display. So here is what we will do. Copy the project to another location. Now open the IOC file in cubemx. Let's see the UART 4. Here you can see the pins being used for the UART 4. I want to initialize the interrupt for the UART 4, so let's enable it. Don't make any unnecessary changes in the file. Generate the code now. Don't open the project, instead open the folder. Now go to the CM7 core source and open the UART.c file. Here you can see the interrupt has been initialized, so let's copy this. You can put it in the UART source file itself, but since it's initialized after the UART, I am just putting it here in the task function. Another addition that would have happened is in the interrupt file. Let's copy the UART handle and paste it in the interrupt file. The UART4 interrupt handler is also created, so we will copy it in our interrupt file. That's all the changes happened when we added the interrupt. Let's write the rest of the function now. First we will set the DE pin low, so that the RS485 can be put in the receiver mode. Now we will receive data in the receive to idle interrupt mode. The data will be stored in the Rx buffer, and the maximum, we can receive 64 bytes at once. Let's define this Rx buffer. Since we don't need anything else from this task, let's give a bigger delay here. Now when the UART has received 64 bytes, or it detects an idle line before that, an interrupt will trigger. This will call the Rx event callback function. Here we will first copy the data from the Rx buffer into our structure. I am setting the last data byte as the string terminator, and updating the length parameter with the new size. Now we will send the structure to the queue. So first we will check if there is some space in the queue. If there is, then put the message. The priority and timeout, both are set to zero here. And finally call the receive function again. So that is all we need to do for sending the data, let's build the code now. The string header file needs to be included here. Now define these newly created functions in the my file header, so that we can call them in the main file. Alright now we need to receive this data in the model, and finally display it on the UI. So let's start with the model first. Let's define the UART queue handle as the external variable, 
and also define a new structure to save the received data. The model tick function is called every time the frame is refreshed on the UI, so we will write our code inside it. We will first check if there is some data available in the queue. If there is, then we will get the data, and store it in the structure we defined. Now copy the data from the structure, and store it in an array. We need to define the character array in the model header file. Once the data has been stored, call the function uart display in the model listener. We need to define this function in the model listener. Make sure the function has an empty implementation. Since the function has an empty implementation, it will look for the same function in the presenter now. So we will define the same function in the presenter header file, and write the code for it in the source file. Here we will call the same function in the view. So now define it in the view header file. Finally we will write the code in the view source file. Here we will use the Unicode string copy function to copy the data into the text area UART buffer. I guess I forgot to implement the wildcard for the text area. Let me do this quickly. The buffer should have one higher byte than the maximum data you are displaying on it. Regenerate the code. Let's refresh the project once. It is still not showing in the autocomplete, so let me copy it from the screen view base file. After copying the data into the buffer, we will invalidate the text area, so the changes can take effect. The string copy inclusion is missing, so let's include the C string. Alright the code builds fine. Go to touch GFX, and flash the code to the board. I have connected the RS485 module to the computer, and it is connected to COM port 7. You can see the UART data is being displayed on the text area. Here the data has exceeded the space available for the text area. This is because I forgot to include the word wrap in the code. Here in the view file, set the wide text action to word wrap. This will fix that issue, and the text will automatically display on the next line. The LED is working fine, and now we have the UART also. So this completes today's video about sending the data from UART to the UI. I hope you understood the procedure. I am still working on the ADC, and once I interface it successfully, I will make a video on it. The link to download the code is in the description below. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.